Was that a question? I didn't, or just a background. Might have been my cat, sorry. Okay, oh, that's all fine. That's fine. Yeah, luckily we don't have too many people. Our, our little dog, uh, Bichon, uh, it tends to uh, uh, bark in protective mode uh, when anybody comes near the house, uh, especially if they're walking the dog. Okay. All right. Um, well, I thought I'd just go over uh, a little bit of the homework. Uh, the um, homework uh, was uh, iteration four. Uh, or at least that's, that was her previous iteration. Um, remember, it just uh, did the things of uh, uh, set up a target, uh, check to see, report high and low and randomize the target. And our new iteration was going to take that. In fact, if we just run that, and you can too, you, it, it, the, uh, it's in a, the exercises, 20 questions, dev uh, a folder, and iteration underscore four dot PY uh, is there. And you should probably, if you can, if you can still see uh, the rest, you should try to open up our uh, uh, open up the file for yourself so you can possibly do some things. So uh, in essence, if we just run this, and it does uh, enters a guess. And of course you can, just like I type an uh, example, it's program says too low. Uh, we say maybe halfway in between and oh, maybe and oh, I'm getting close. Ah, aha. congratulations. Okay, so notice now. By the way, here's a a, a chance that uh, we'll we'll show you a, a bit of. It seems a while for testing things out, so you go through a, a number of these uh, to try things out. Um, if uh, one way to speed that, first of all, we're going to go to iteration five. So we're going to just say save as, and then you should go along if you can. Uh, we're going to save this thing, and uh, we're going to. I put it in my my work folder, uh, and then I say, okay, it's going to be iteration five. So I'll say iteration five, and if I say save. Uh, it's going to iteration five. Now, remember the first thing we do is we come here and uh, we have it as a new name, but we have to now make things true by saying, okay, uh, this is iteration five here. If you really count on like tracking things, what I've often done in a professional area is I keep the previous states um, there underneath, and I just say, okay, what's today is the 12th, October. And uh, see, sometimes I don't even follow my own. I like things to line up. And then I say, well, uh, Sometimes uh, the simplest thing I can think of to put down is to tell myself and others who read it but where this exam, where this file came from. Uh, this says, you know, the name of the file and the date, who did it, who changed it, and then here's a, a simple comment, simplest one-line comment. And sometimes it'll be, oh, some little thing I'm going to do. I could have maybe put uh, a preamble up here, but I just say, oh. Uh, this file here came from iteration four. Whoops. I should. Uh, just so if I come back here and I look and I say, oh, where did this, oh, this came from iteration four. These are changes from, from that. Then the next thing, of course, is we say, well, we're going to put the next comment we're going to put.
and we just put something like that. Notice I have uh, com I comment this out with the uh, uh, pound sign. Uh, one could make this a multi-line uh, documentation comment just by uh, coming here. In fact, why don't we why don't we do that just for um, so, okay, down here, uh, we'll put uh, bump, bump, bump by itself. And oh, I see this should have been. Okay, and now I just say, uh, and now uh, what I can do is I just come down here and end it out. Uh, if I wanted to, I could come up here in this editor and just say, uh, let's get rid of those uh, pound signs by uh, saying something like, oh, we edit uh, somewhere here, it says replace. And then uh, let's see, pound sign, I'll replace that with uh, just a space. And oh, I don't want to replace that one. So I'll just exit out there. And now this reads a little bit uh, uh, nicer, uh, maybe, uh, with the multi line docs screen. So Anyway, the main thing is here, our new, our new uh, iteration five is gonna be everything we had before. And well, we're gonna add an explanative uh, preamble before the game. And uh, so we get down here, by the way, uh, just to make things a little, we'll uncomment out this line here, which TFD is my shorthand for temporary for debugging. Uh, I'll just put, five here, which will set target high to five instead of 20, and it'll make it easier for us to, to try things out a little bit, since uh, the list of uh, possible uh, targets is a lot smaller. So here we say, okay, we want to put our, we said we're going to put a preamble before the game starts, and we're just going to say, oh, oh well, first of all, we say a preamble. And our preamble is going to be, uh, well, let's use it a multi-line preamble. And then we're going to say something like, uh, well, let's say, let's say we were going to be two, one and 20. Uh, um, let's see, what else? Um, uh, oh. and you can do more, uh, things but let's just say uh, that's what you do and now of course we said we really wanted to do uh something a little bit because if we change the target we want to be sure uh that our preamble thing so what we can do is we said there is this really nice feature of python uh called formatted string so you just put a, a f before your a triple quote or F before your triple single quote or F before a single quote. And then the, the string you print out will be exactly what you have here, except you have the option of now putting in, uh, in be surrounded by curlies, you can have values. The simplest value, of course, is, uh, is a, um, uh, you know, a variable name, but you can try other things. We'll show you in, the, in some other examples.
And then of course, low. And then of course, we have to print out the preamble. And let's try running it. Run. And notice the source must be saved. This is a time to go back and see if you're actually, <coughs> if you got to save as. Sometimes I've done things. I've said, oh, I'm going to make a new file. And then I forgot to save as. So this gives you a chance. Oh, yes, it is going to be uh, underscore five uh, iteration. So we save. And whoops, invalid syntax. Ah, OK. Well, uh, people should say, oh, well, well, what I forgot to do is I accidentally erased the pound sign. So then we got, OK, let's run this change. It's going to say source control. We, yeah, sure. And I'm thinking of a number between 5 and 1. Whoops. That's not good because, of course, well, I like to put the lower number first. So let's just assume that we didn't want that. And yes, it's still running. We're stopping it. And then what we'll do is we'll go and see, notice it doesn't take a lot. To And then we come back and run it. And I'm thinking of number between one and five. Uh, do you guess? Ending with enter. And now we can enter a guess. Uh, say three and four. And congratulations. All right. So that's the sort of change you notice. We just added a little bit more to our program, iteration five. Uh, essentially added an explanative uh, preamble. Uh, you know, you could put more uh, in here. And if you, you wanted to, you could, uh, in a more fancy game, you could make the preambles uh, uh, language uh, specific. If you wanted to try to do this uh, type of a game and you want to say, I want to do it in Spanish and the German and what have you. Uh, essentially, uh, you just have to find a way of deciding of uh, which what your preambles are. And then we just print it out. The main thing is we have this uh, triple double quote uh, multi line, and we use a formatted string to allow us to niftily put values in the play in our string. Any questions about that? Okay. Uh, I think the next uh, uh, homework uh, has a uh, uh, taking this iteration and uh, adding, uh, uh, allowing you to play multiple games. Notice this just, just had one game. What you'd like to be able to do is, uh, if they finish the game, uh, ask the user if they want to uh, play another time. Uh, just a hint, uh, uh, you'll probably, uh, this is a loop, you probably make a, uh, uh, put this in another loop indented for uh, a while true and uh, ask people if they, uh, at the end, whether they want to uh, play another game. Okay, any questions? Okay. All right, well, let's see. Another homework we had was I guess we can, was uh, part of our um, uh, dealing with uh, dictionaries, which we used in addition to being able to have multiple things in uh, a group by key. We just used the fact that we could have multiple keys in a group and allow us to uh, use for key, key or commands. And in fact, if we just take a look at, uh, let's see. I think if we had motion, there we are. 
and we show this in class and essentially uh, we add the commands. It's a, it's a instance of a dictionary, which is a useful uh, concept in uh, a Python and it's available in um, almost every other language I know of, uh, except for Fortran. Uh, that allows you to have a key and a value and pairs. And this is how we set up the uh, list. In this case, we just use the fact that we have uh, a bunch of keys and we don't even care much about the values except the, uh, we like to keep the syntax. Actually, the way there is a, 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 another um, capability a, a value or another um, Python a variable type called set, which essentially is the same thing with just a bunch of keys. But for right now, historically, uh, a lot of languages have uh, what we'll call, I call structures or dictionaries or hashes that allow pairs. And that's good enough. So we'll just keep it that way. We have a command. Remember, we looked at this. It has up different directions. You can have other commands. In fact, we have the different directions. And then we have uh, by to, to end. Uh, we notice, we remember, we had uh, a previous, uh, for previous commands. So we can allow us the things you've seen, like at HEMs, where they have, in parentheses, um, a default, whatever the often things we, so if we just hit enter. So if we just run this, just to remind ourselves, we run the module uh, and notice we, we printed out uh, our little screen, if you will, with uh, our empty as a dot and our full, which we have none. And then we just did uh, enter left up. And if we just say uh, here, we're, we have right, so we can just hit enter. And we have an error because I probably made some uh, change here that I didn't check out. So let's just check it. Uh, line 52, uh, in our options, we can show the line numbers and we can just take a look. Actually, there's a, a little thing in, in uh, idle that I think if you just put it here, and you hit a right click, it goes to the line. Isn't that clever? Well, anyway, uh, it's not the most uh, fancy uh, um, code editor in the world, but it's not bad for free. So what does it say? It says uh, file, that's our file name, motion.py. Look at it, there's the whole thing, so sometimes it's a lot of text, but it does do exactly, say exactly where you are in line 52, which we went to. And it says set up uh, is a line and it says I call is not defined. Um, so I see what we did. We, we, it, it's some time back when I first tried this uh, sample for uh, uh, exercise and homework, um, I didn't do. Um, I, I, I didn't have this I knew call and I knew rec because what I did is I only had these variables and uh, allows you to march around. But because in this case, I have a bunch of uh, things to do and I want to be sure that if I only update the the values that we're at in this uh, little rectangle, if things are going okay. So what I did is I said, okay, I'm just gonna keep uh, these things and set these up, these new, the new values up according to up, down, left, right, which move according to our little, uh, but because uh, because what happens is if, if you hit something uh, like here, uh, where you're out of bounds, I don't want to change the, the values that we're at. So what we have to do here is, I think, 
Uh, to make things a little easier, we'll just we'll set these up. So these are just starting value, starting, and we'll say we'll start in the upper. So hopefully if we run this, And then we say, okay, we're going to do, uh, we're gonna hit enter to go right. And notice that we go over there and uh, down. See, the, the thing is, if I said something like, uh, oh, I don't understand in, I wanna be sure that, uh, I haven't changed my place um, or the, the value here. I don't want the, the previous, I don't want to remember the previous command as something erroneous, I find out is erroneous. So I say, okay, um, if I just say down now, I should, I should go right where I was. And sure enough, I did. So that's uh, why I use these, sort of temporary targets, but be, I forgot to, to set them up here. And so of course I had what's called a bug, a, pro, a problem with the bug, a problem with the program. And it, sure enough, it came to bit me. Um, so now I, I corrected the pro problem and I ran it again and things look okay. So, that's what we had done before. It looks like it still now works. So let's say, what would we want to do? We said in the, in the homework, if I can remember where I can uh, find the homework, it's in our, um, uh, let's see, I go here and I say introduction. I'm just using uh, the, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, Explorer, Windows Explorer to, to go around. So I'm just gonna go uh, in file and programming and it's in our presentation because there was a homework assignment and I'm gonna go down to, I think it was dictionaries and I go dictionaries and I go to homework and Oh, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't change that. Let's see, uh, that's the 20 questions. And then, ah, okay, here's what the homework was gonna do. Starting with that thing we started out before the motion, uh, we said, okay, let's, let's uh, like a lot of things I find myself doing in, in games that look like they're promising. I said, okay, what can I add to make this a little bit more uh, interesting. Now, notice we, we made this a little bit more simple than some of the things, but it still, uh, I think, uh, demonstrates uh, the principles. So we say, okay, let's change, let's make a few additional things. We're gonna start the motion location instead of what we do here at uh, you know, the upper left-hand corner, we're gonna start at a random point within the boundaries to the, and we're gonna start somewhere between one and the board width and one and the board height. And we're gonna, we're gonna display it as uh, S for start instead of just the, you know, empty. And then we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna put the goal, a goal where you can go to as a G in some random spot within the board boundaries, but we're gonna be, uh, a little clever, I'm gonna say, we're not gonna put it right on top of where the G, the, the, um, 
you know, I'm not going to put the goal right on top of the starting point. That's a little trivial. I don't think people are going to feel that was a very exciting game. And then, okay, after each move, we're going to test to see if uh, we're uh, at the goal. And we're going to continue to test to uh, if we're out of bounds. Uh, I thought about putting a beep, but I didn't get around to that. And then we said, okay, we're going to do, uh, we're going to make the markers a little bit uh, fancier. We're going to make them, instead of one character wide, we're going to make them three characters wide so that we can have uh, same width for all the markers uh, and big enough to save one uh, when you get to the goal. All right. Any questions about that? So this is just the, the homework that we we're going to say we're going to make just a few uh, additions to uh, our example. Let's see. We might as well might as well exit that. And because there are a number of changes, we're just going to take up our uh, new file move to goal, which you can find in. Uh, I think I sent you that in uh, one of the emails because this was a new that I put. So you don't have to worry about it. It's just, if you have it, you could uh, open it yourself and make uh, and program along if you we make some changes. So anyway, uh, simple motion commands, user input directions, that's all the commentary that you might add. Uh, but we're gonna add a starting point, a goal, and we're gonna check for goal. Uh, pretty much uh, what we saw before, uh, we uh, are making the width uh, pretty much the same as we had, a little wider than, uh, a little higher than the wide. Uh, so the first thing we find is we said we're gonna make the, uh, some of these markers involved uh, three wide with putting spaces around uh, the single character markers uh, to give us a little space and, and easy to read and uh, that. And then we're gonna also have a, uh, an additional marker which we're going to put down as one uh, if uh, we the user finds the goal. Uh, pretty much the print board is pretty much the same uh, as we had before. Just goes through uh, a loop um, for the uh, row and then the column, and then we print uh, the board value, uh, which will be one of these uh, things. Uh, now, starting goals. Here's something new. We say, okay, we're going to just make a few additional variables. Uh, it says that uh, the start is going to be, remember, randint. Uh, we uh, up here at uh, our importing, we just from random, we imported randint, one of the many useful functions in random. So we just say, okay, I, I wrote start. Remember, I like to use the word, the letter I to remind me that uh, it's a zero based uh, thing. So uh, we're gonna set the, uh, it to be a random. The row is gonna be uh, zero base, zero to the board height uh, minus one. Uh, and then the column start is gonna be, uh, you know, somewhere between random integer between zero and the board width. Uh, and then we also do, uh, I like to print out things to, to remind me what's going on. So I print that out. Um, don't have to do that. Sometimes uh, because there's a lot of possible printing, I sometimes make variable trace variables that I put if trace variable equals such and such, do the printing. So you can turn on and off the printing. That's just a stylistic of programming when you get to do uh, more complicated programs. Even when the thing is running and working and no syntax errors, you still might find some errors or logical things that you need some, you need to give yourself some direction as to what's going on. So here we do, uh, we're gonna put the goal in, but we have to follow a little bit more. Uh, we have to, we say, oh, we're gonna put the goal, but we're gonna check to see that it's not on top of the starting value. So uh, sometimes this turns out to be a little tricky to learn, 
but often when you have a situation where uh, you have to check and things might not be ready yet, you sometimes put together a while loop that just says, okay, I'm gonna keep going in hopes that I will get to the right place and then I will uh, break out of the loop and uh, I'll have the right, what I want. So here I do, in this loop, I just said, I wrote goal to a rand it, some of it is what we did for the start and then column to same thing. And then what I do is I say, okay, let's check to see that the, uh, we're not on top. And uh, I just say, okay, uh, I'm gonna check to see that uh, if, if, the, if the start is um, not equal to, if the goal uh, row is not equal to the goal start, we we got something uh, unique, and or if the uh, column is not equal. Now I I I say this so that you can have you can have a, a, a goal on the same row, uh, or the same column, but you just can't have them on the same row and column. And then uh, if that's the case, uh, we break out because then we've we've satisfied our um, our conditions. So if we just run this program right now, and you can sort of see uh, what we've done. We've uh, we did that printing to, to tell us where the uh, start was, and we did the printing to goal, and we can look and see, oh yes, indeed the row is the same, but the columns are different, that's fine. And we see the printout looks like uh, pretty much what we'd expect. We have a S for the starting point and a G for the uh, ending point. And then we can say, oh, okay, uh, let's, uh, we're here. We can do uh, enter uh, because that's going to give us the, ah, okay. So sure enough, uh, at least it works in one case. This is not to be confused with really testing a lot, but it did, did do sort of what we, uh, uh, we expect it. All right, and it says goodbye. Uh, and let's see, is there anything else here? Um, oh, da, 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 da. Let's see, we start out and we initialize the, and notice how we initialize this uh, the thing to work. Uh, we go through the, um, we use sometimes a shorter value, a shorter variable name to, to remind us that we're, we're iterating through the row. Uh, we use a range. Uh, remember, it gives us out a list of uh, uh, zero through one less than the board height, which is exactly uh, the number of uh, rows that we should be going through. We build up the next row as we did in the previous uh, program, and then we start initialize the row to be empty. And then as we go through the column, we do the uh, a iteration in columns going through zero through the one less than the board width. And then as we go through, we just check to see, oh, if we are we at the start? If so, we set the marker to the start. Else if, if is the goal, we set the marker to goal. Else, well, the marker was empty. And then, of course, we append the row. And then we, uh, as we append the columns to the row, and then we append the whole row to the board. And so that, uh, let's see, that shows us how to, how we set things up. And then uh, we start the location. Uh, now, here's a thing you haven't seen uh, much, I think, at all. Um, in Python, you have the capability of having a tuple, either two or three or four uh, things in one, very much like a list, but not, it's like a, a, a what's called an immutable list or a, a tuple. Um, and one nice thing about that is uh, you can create a tuple like that by having a value, comma, value. And then you can assign it and you can break out the 
tuple into its first and second pieces. It's just a rather, in, in this case, it's a very small amount of what you're using, but it's sort of nice if you have this sort of thing where you're we're setting two values to the other two values. Anyway, so here's our, our, our game in process. We, we print the board as we saw before. And then we get our input. And if, and of course we, we put the, the previous command there in square brackets. So we let the user know we'll repeat it if he hits enter. And then we just check if the input is empty, then we set the command equal to the previous command. Uh, if it's, and that's nice that we, we spent some effort in being sure that we, we don't save it as previous command if it has any errors, because then what would happen is you made an error such as out of bounds or stuff, and then we just keep saying the same thing. We, we don't want it to, we don't want the user to see the square bracket and have something in there that's, that's not valid. Then if it's not empty, then we set input. Now remember this input is a string and Python has a number of useful commands. One of them is a member commands for strings is lower, which just makes, which converts input and returns the, it doesn't change input. It returns the input with all the characters of the string, lowercase. So this allows us to set command uh, in as all lowercase. So then we can allow the user to type uh, uppercase uh, left or uppercase right and still you know, be able to compare with the right command. So then we say if command not in, and this is the way to test to see if, uh, if this string, is not one of the keys, if you will, of commands, then it will fail that test. So that's a very nice slick way of being able to uh, test for uh, membership. And that's just exactly what you want to do if you're doing some sort of game where you have a numerous number of commands and you want to see uh, easily if uh, what the user typed is notice it's got it has the keys have to be say they are compared with exact case in mind so that is the important thing about doing this is it allows us to uh, essentially make everything in lowercase which just allows us to have less uh, frustration by somebody who types uh, a lowercase or uppercase um, command value and, and is quizzical about why why it didn't work. This makes it, forces it to, to test and sort of case, case exact, if you will. Case. And then here we do this, uh, uh, we set, uh, uh, we're gonna set these candidate locations of what we're gonna go to. And then we say, okay, we, this is setting our candidates to what we are now. And then we just test to see if the command is up, and if it's up, we're gonna reduce the our candidate row by one. Else, if it's down, we're gonna increase. Remember, uh, rows go down in our our rules here. We could do something else, but in our case, we just follow the the common, um, if you will, screen. Um, what do we call it? The style that most people use these days. And then of course, if we're if left, we're going to make the columns go uh, less. And if it's right, we're gonna make it go right. And if it's by, we're going to quit because that's what we say we would do if, uh, if the user typed by. Now notice, okay, we've just set up these candidates. So we haven't done anything yet, uh, except set up these candidate locations. Now we check to see if, uh, if doing these commands would put us uh, off the board, either to the left or to the right. Uh, and if it does, then we print out a message saying, uh, you know, what the column is, what the row is, and the column is out of bounds. 
Notice we, we know that the I is zero based and what most humans like to think of as the first column is one. We, we add one here in the message to print that out. Um, and we say out of bounds and we notify and then we just say continue so that we go back to the row and notice we haven't we haven't changed the location yet so we the user still is at these i row and i column we would have gone to something out of bounds so that we we check same thing we check for uh the row uh and then if we fall through to here everything's fine so now we set i row to ir and ic because we're we made the change to the of what we expected or what we desired from what's action. And then we do something that says, okay, now that we made our update, now let's check to see if indeed uh, our row and column match the goal. And if it does, then we're gonna change the marker to goal attend, which is the one, uh, we're going to uh, put this here and we're just going to, this is a temporary, we could have probably gotten around with just saying goal attend equals, but I, I sometimes like to have uh, temporaries to, to remind myself what's going on. And then of course, we print the board uh, with the uh, winning uh, position shown, and then we congratulate them. If they didn't, then we're going to, if we didn't win, we still, we'd like to update the, uh, set the marker to full. Uh, we, we got to here so we can remember the previous command, our current command, and then we can say, I suppose I, this is probably an error. I shouldn't, either I should, if I'm gonna do this, I should probably put a marker here. and then store. So let's see. And here we are. So uh, oh, where are we? Uh, Yeah, okay. So, any questions about that? As I said, uh, it's not what you call, I won't uh, knock, uh, you know, Pac-Man off the, uh, uh, off the edge of the uh, known world, but um, for something we could do on, on just the Python that we've covered so far, um, I, I don't think, I think that's uh, cute. We could, um, if you like this and want to do, uh, more things, uh, think about it. I mean, uh, one possibility, I, I think I made a note here. Ah, I tried to use a, a special character uh, for uh, uh, moving around, but uh, I wasn't able to get the things to line up quite right because when you start doing these special characters, uh, things didn't didn't quite work out but you could try that or uh, another thing I thought was uh, might be useful or uh, fun to do is uh, instead of just putting stars here uh, if you recognize that a new thing went down uh, you might put uh, a vertical bar or if things went uh, left or right you might put uh, uh, you know, a minus and a greater than or a greater than or less than and minus to give us sort of a, a picture of, of direction. Um, those are, you know, things that one might be able to take this example. And don't feel like you have to do everything from scratch. There's no problem, no shame in taking what I've done, uh, an example and, and, and playing around with it. Uh, I said, you, there might be a way to make uh, pictures bigger by, uh, in, in addition to making the, uh, 
the markers uh, three characters wide, if you made them three characters uh, high, uh, you might be able to make them uh, make uh, a, uh, a a nicer looking um, picture. I guess another thing was that I thought that might be of interest is uh, uh, if you set this thing up and then you made it uh, such that uh, you couldn't go over uh, previous uh, things in a, in a bigger, I mean, you certainly could make this more than five characters uh, or six characters wide. If you made it a while, you might find it, um, uh, find out that you, you could put uh, uh, other things on the, uh, uh, on the board and, and then make it uh, such that you didn't allow, just like you don't allow them to go out of bounds, you could make it such that uh, you can't go over walls or through walls. Anyway, so there, there's a you know a little picture of a you know another game, different uh, style than the one we're doing for our project, but uh, well within uh, you know what I would call ourselves a be here beginners. Uh, you might find it uh, uh, if you want to go further. You might find this is a, a thing you could use to help you uh, give you some impetus to do some some programming. Any any questions? Okay. Okay. Well, that's that was just a, another further example of using a dictionary. In our case, uh, just the uh, the keys. Important, but you could certainly use these uh, values here for other sorts of uh, other sorts of uh, things. Uh, you can make them values that indicate that whether uh, uh, you can do this or something. You can make games. You can make your game more and more complicated as as uh, whether somebody's allowed to do uh, up or down, or maybe has to. Uh, he can't do up or down uh, more than once or twice in a row, or some some other things like that. Anyway, you can get uh, going, and if you if you latch on to something that's fun, uh, let me know. And. Uh, I'm gladly give uh, you know gladly uh, collaborate if you will if if only to give you uh, advice when asked. Okay, that was another uh, you know dictionaries very good uh, um, programming uh, concept and uh, supported well in uh, Python. Uh, classes are another major major. Um, programming a tool, if you will, uh, uh, using uh, virtually every language now uh, has some sort of classes. And a class is just a uh, way to give more structure, if you will, to, in fact, some uh, languages like Perl, you use the word struct to, and, and C uh, to use uh, to uh, implement uh, these things, classes. Essentially, uh, it's complex data types. Uh, you can see for the reasons why you use complex, uh, the world is just replete with, um, you know, complicated data. For example, like a person has a name, has an address, uh, in fact, has home address, work address, and the address itself has maybe a number, a street, a state, and so on. So you notice that there's there's reason for nesting this thing because uh, some complicated data will have uh, classes, need for classes, and those inside those classes, uh, further classes to give uh, you know control over the data, if you will. Uh, for example, complicated activity organizations. You might have an airport. Uh, airport might have a name. Uh, different airports will have names, they'll have addresses, they'll have runways. Uh, a runway uh, might have a length, a width, a location, a direction. And so you can sort of see that if you were doing a program that had to deal with um, such as airports, that you would have to have, at least you, it would be uh, useful for the programming language to help you support those things so you wouldn't have to, I mean, you can always use a number of uh, different variables, but if they were just simple variables, 
uh, you'd probably have to have, you know, a prefix that said, okay, that's the, it's an airport. And then a, a, another uh, prefix that says it's a, uh, a particular airport and so on. And you just find yourself getting really confused. Um, so in fact, the, uh, this whole idea of class and structures uh, talk about object oriented. And all the, you've probably heard about it, but it, it's, it's no more or less than uh, things in programming to help, or the programming language to help you deal with objects because the world is full of objects, not just a single yes and no or a single number, but a whole um, slew of things as we showed in examples. And in fact, <clears throat> uh, these classes now have data, i.e. The, the state of the, the variable, like uh, uh, location, velocity, what have you, and then functions such as uh, turn or stop or things like that. So in fact, uh, C, a previous language that is actually used a lot uh, still because it's, it's it's the bone bare bones, very efficient language. Uh, didn't really had uh, lots of capability for uh, structs that had data, but not so easy to have um, classes or structures that also had data and function. So you had to do sort of some, something special uh, for functions. Not that you couldn't do it, but it just uh, languages and, and that really handle object-oriented things like to support both the object's data and functions, i.e. what can you do on this data? Uh, just sort of an example of, of uh, in, in Python, uh, if you want to create an object, often you say a name equals, and then you give it a class name, which is sort of the, the, the template for the uh, name of the, the object, and then values for uh, setting up the parameters. Uh, and then when you want to use that object, you say uh, object very much is kin that we saw using uh, uh, lists are, and uh, uh, call it uh, dictionaries where you add the object uh, square bracket and you it put the key. In this case, uh, when you use the object, you say object dot. And for the function in the object, you say, say the name of the function within the object. So uh, list says what you're going to do for the data in the object called obj. And in this case, obj or add similar to that sort of thing. So here you have in action, you create it by saying obj equals class name with values. And then to use it, you say object.list or object.class or whatever the parameters are. We did the things such as strings or objects. And you saw how you could say uh, string variable name dot lower and that allowed you to uh, get a lower case on all the variables in that string. For example, here's a read class that are already present, such as in our turtle. Uh, we had, uh, here's a case of importing turtle as we talked about. And here we're just gonna set uh, two different turtles And then we're going to do a forward uh, and so on using the different turtles objects. What are we doing on the object T1, which is a turtle object? And here we're doing uh, on object T2. Uh, for give you an example, uh, if we just take a look at uh, a couple examples here. Uh, let's see. OK. Recent files, and I think if we said uh, it's in, oh, I think I have it in some things are slightly a different thing, objects, multiple, yes, there we are. To uh, in some being inconsistent, uh, some of my exercises in this case are in exercises turtle. 
whereas some of the exercises are in, uh, in this case, uh, exercises classes. In this case, we have a file called Obj uh, multiple, which just shows several turtles. And all we're going to do is we're just going to create a, uh, a list of turtles. We have a uh, notice here's our, our list of colors. And we're just going to go through a range of NT, which is a list of colors. And then we're just going to say, uh, create a turtle object, set the color of that turtle object, go right 30, degree, or 30 degrees times I, which you'll just sort of, you'll see it in a, in a minute. And then we can go forward a little bit variable, and then we're just going to append that into our list. We don't do too much with our list yet, but let's just show you. Here's our example. And if you have a chance, you should get it and try it. OK, so that's, that's just our example of our, our, our little object, multiple object. You don't see too much there, but you sort of get the hint that we, with this little code here, we just made a little set of uh, uh, lines. Notice each one of these is a turtle an object, and notice each one has a arrow, which is what uh, turtle provides graphically to sort of give you a picture of you know where it is. So there we are. Now let's just make this a little bit and notice here's what we have. We just have essentially what we started out making our turtle objects. And then we just say, okay, let's do a little bit of a couple loops uh, by going through the turtles that we set up using a little bit more of uh, lengthy long, long uh, line elongation. We keep the color the same. So you should see pretty much So that's making our first, and then we just sort of go through, and then we go through again. And so that's our, our picture. And you can sort of see the power here of, of making a bunch of objects that you can now, in this case, uh, operate on as we did here by just going through uh, this list of turtle objects that we created in this set of lines here. And we just set up our list. And then we just go through here and uh, do a little bit more uh, playing around. Don't worry about if you don't understand exactly how it made this thing. The biggest thing is you can sort of see how you can, you can make a, a list of uh, objects and you can then, uh, or objects of any storage, and you can then individually uh, deal with those objects. And so you can make a, in this case, uh, a rather uh, uh, cute picture with very little uh, code. The main thing is this gives you the sense of what you can do. You can, and this is, this in case is, is using a, a object, if you will, turtle, that's already been uh, designed for you and built for you and written for you. And all you had to do is import turtle and then use the construction, if you will, constructor often, as people call it in some languages, to allow you to build and to create a, another instance. That's often a term people use, an instance of that object. And then you can uh, deal with that object. And in this case, we can save that object. And then from then on, we can go through those objects and do different things um, with them. Any questions? All right, so that's, that's uh, using uh, objects uh, that uh, you've already had noticed. So we, we use the uh, construction and then we use, uh, calling uh, using the member functions of those, 
those turtle functions, which are all defined in your uh, module turtle that you can find in your uh, uh, using your idle, going to the idle docs and then to module. Any questions? Okay. All right. So that's now. How do we build our own modules? Because in our using classes, how do we design our own classes? Uh, the classes are the, the definition of the template, if you will, and the modules are the, the things that we we create by saying, you know, class name, parameter, uh, values. Notice when we called turtle, uh, we didn't have any values there necessary. All we wanted is the basic turtle, and then we use it. Okay, so we have just a few things. There are special things that we'll look at, but just to give you a hint, there are some predefined functions that <coughs> you will um, you will write, but they're defined as underscore underscore int underscore underscore, and that gets called to initialize the data when you call uh, turtle. When I when this gets called. There, there's a I underscore underscore init underscore underscore inside the turtle uh, code that is called to set all the things necessary to to make it a turtle. And then when you want to call, if you want to describe, often for debugging purposes, you want to show uh, something as a string, you can call, define an underscore underscore str underscore underscore that shows your your home built uh, class as a string. Notice all these start with self because that's a special uh, argument, if you will, for uh, that are all in all the member functions. I'll show you. Okay, so just remember the init and the stir are you write them. But when you do, Python will, and you, and you use it in a certain way, Python will call them in a predefined special way, init, when you did your class name, something to set up your object. Stir will call when Python uses your object called as a string. I'll show you that in a minute. OK. So here is a more detailed thing. You will write to define a class called person. You say class space person colon, and then you will define uh, an it function to do the appropriate thing to set your, your person up. Uh, example will show you. Uh, class person, person's information, the setup, and the actions. So here we'll go look, and you can look at this file yourself locally. If you just, uh, let's see, somewhere here we have in classes, and I don't see it, so we'll just go here. And I don't particularly want that right now. So we'll go up here and we'll just say, since I position myself, we'll say open. And it has an involved classes. So we'll go back to classes. And if we find person classes folder, and then we said we will, let's see which one that we can look at. Okay, here we are, person. All right, here's just another sort of detailed example, just to sort of, you know, know, know everything, just an example, be around to take a look at further. Uh, our file, just like we always do, person.py, the date, and initials, and maybe I'd put something here, uh, usually a comment up here. It's just a simple example of a class, embodies the person's information. 
So we say class, person, colon. Often we have more data, more, more just uh, documentation. It's called documentation string. It embodies a person's information. Just sort of to tell us and anybody else, what does this class person mean or do? And then we say, okay, one of the first things you'll see usually is a init underscore init underscore that you will write class instance object setup function. And then most important is you'll have this self comma, which is a reference to the object. Python will set that up for you to be used by you later on here in the function. And then here you have a bunch of uh, parameters or arguments that sort of allow you to specify how you're going to set up person. The name, uh, is friend, is family. Remember we did that in the function. Here allows you to do it a little bit more tightly. Uh, and then of course we have the uh, default values. Uh, notice if you don't have a, a default value, you must, this one of course is there. Uh, the user won't put it there, Python will put it there, but the caller will put the name as required. And these are, are sort of optional. And then inside the body of your function in it, you will take the name in this case, and you will store it in the object. And the way you store it in the object is you use the self because Python set self up to be a reference to where uh, it's going to set up the storage. And you don't have to worry about the storage because Python will do that for you. And then here you're going to set is friend uh, in the self is friend. Notice if you didn't put it there, he's going to default to false. Same thing goes for is family. He's going to default to false. And the address, he's going to default to none, which is just going to give you some chance. If you go later on, somebody looks at address, you may have to uh, do something special. And now here's another built-in, if you will, uh, underscore str, str underscore. Uh, it's going to be whenever Python uses your object as a string, uh, this is what you're going to give it. You're going to say, oh, OK, I want to say person colon and then the, the name. And then if he's a friend, I'm going to add this to the string. And if he's a, his family, I'm going to add this to the string. And if it's address, well, if it's address is not none, because if he set it to none as a default, if he's not none, then we're going to stick off some uh, address and we're going to use formatted string and we're going to just put the the address there. Uh, okay, and uh, this wrapper is another built in that's it's called a representative uh, form of a variable and you don't use it too much, but in more elaborate uh, cases, it's very much often exactly the S, the string value and that's in fact what we just did here. Now, uh, since we built this class here by doing this, uh, we can now test it. Remember, we can use the self-testing uh, if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equal equal underscore underscore main underscore underscore, then we will run this test, which means we're going to just set up person uh, per, and then we just print per name, and then the per, which is a, a going to be interpreted as a string representation of this object. And Python's going to call this stuff here. And you're going to get that to print out. And then we did uh, another version of the object person. And we put a couple other values here. And we put a little bit more. And then we did a test to see if uh, if a person is friend, and if it is, we'll print that out. So let's just take this and run. And you can sort of see that uh, here's our little self-test. And it just sort of says, remember the, uh, remember 
He's going to print per name, which is just Ray in this case, but he's going to print uh, the object per as a string. And this here is what your, init, your STR uh, created. And often you'll use that stir as a, uh, a diagnostic generation. So it'll give you a, a readable sense of what your uh, object is. Um, so any questions about that? We went pretty fast, but we did show an example of uh, how you could build a person very much um, similar to uh, the sort of thing we did um, friends and family, at least the, the, the uh, information in, but of course we didn't do the, uh, we didn't add functions to, uh, to do the uh, friends and family sort of thing, uh, but we did the, the guts to set you up a class called a person, which you can make a bunch of, and you could do uh, some of these testing on. So in fact, what we want to do to, to get a little closer to the what we saw in friends and families where we just use functions, we say, okay, <coughs> we want to make a, another class called person group, which allows to you to uh, add uh, persons to uh, a group, very much like we did for friends and family, but a little bit more general because then we can have uh, different types of groups of person, not just the one group that we had in, in our friends and family example. And it's going to have the group's information, it's going to have a group setup, it's going to have a group action. And in fact, if we just take a look at uh, If we just saw uh, classes, I wish you could make this a little longer, but I can't, I don't think. No. Uh, oops. I didn't want to do that. Um, let's see, person class, stop, oh, person group. But person group, why do we say two? Interesting. Well, for some reason, I have two different names here. Let's just take a look at what the other one is. Uh, looks pretty much like they're the same, so. So here's a person group and uh, we have our, remember our init, which just says, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, this person's going to be a, a group and we're gonna make it a dictionary. And it's gonna be to remind ourselves since Python doesn't require you to tell, we can say, we're gonna make it a dictionary uh, with keys, the person's name. Then we're going to do, we're going to have an ad, very much like the ad we found in uh, Friends and Family. Uh, we're going to uh, take from person and we're going to take the name, person.name. Remember, person, we haven't seen it here, but uh, it's going to be a, um, it's going to have what we saw here. Where is the person? Uh, it's, it's going to have a, a name as a, a, a member. 
and we can get that. And then we're gonna we're gonna lowercase that, and then we're gonna put that as a key, and we're gonna store the person object that we got for add, and we're gonna store that in the people dictionary. And we're also just like we did with uh, friends and family, we're gonna do this uh, printout. And let's just see. Uh, and then um, we're gonna do some other uh, member functions for our person group. We're gonna do a is family and Essentially, uh, we're going to, um, this is the name of the potential family uh, or name of the member. And we're gonna return true if the name is in the family. We're gonna get, use a function we haven't seen yet, get person, which we give it the name and it returns the person object. And then we're gonna say, well, if it's not none because we're gonna be sure that if accidentally, uh, uh, if, he, if he's in the family, he's gonna return the person. If he's not in the family, he's gonna return uh, none. And then we check if not, if it's not none, which means he's in the family, then we check. So if the person's not in the group, this will return none. And then we check if the person is family, he's gonna return true. And if neither of these are thing, it's gonna return false. So that's gonna be a, a function in there that, that checks for his family. And the same sort of thing for his friend. I won't go over it uh, unless people ask. And then there's a, a get people, which is just a way of saying, okay, uh, the group has a group of person objects. And what I want is sometimes, I just want a list of the names. And so, uh, uh, let's see, uh, we're going to, oh, I guess no, it returns a list of people, okay, persons. Sometimes you have to look at the documentation and hope they did it right to find out what they return. In this case, it returns a list of, of the person objects. And then uh, here's a, and then to get the, the actual person out of the group, you take the name, you do lower the key, and then you check to see if uh, that key is in this dictionary. And if so, then you're going to turn the B of the key, you're going to turn from the uh, dictionary, you're going to turn a person object. And then some more functions. I won't show all these things, but the uh, you, you should uh, take a little look to, to give yourself, uh, 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 try to see if you can understand what's going on. And if you can't, uh, you have uh, a number of sessions left to ask questions. Here's a thing of listing people in the group. Notice these functions can be whatever functions you need. Uh, in this case, uh, so it goes, uh, uh, we have a heading here, optional. So it allows you to, uh, do a listing with an optional heading, which sort of lets you, uh, helps you test things. And so uh, here is sort of the same sort of test we did uh, in friends and family, but here we're doing a test group where we give it a group uh, and a name to test in the group. And then we do uh, testing for the, you know, is the name in the group and so on. And uh, uh, here we do some more uh, things of just sort of exercising our uh, thing. We, we set up a group and then we add uh, a person and then we do the uh, test the group. So if you just take a look, if we just try running this, you can sort of see there's a fair amount of uh, things I don't expect everybody to just get this all. Uh, so uh, let's see, what do we do? Let's just be sure. 
sometimes it's best to just start with a new okay so that's just that's okay and what do we say we say okay um we're going to what was our okay so we just say okay this is a printing the file as a self-test you can sort of see this here but Yeah, it was a self-test. And then here we were going to uh, come down. Okay, that's the test group. And then the first thing we're gonna do is um, we're going to build up a group by first creating the group and then creating a person and adding that person and then doing a, a group list so here you can sort of see that we um, we added the person and then we then did a um, uh, and the group list ah We'll go on to this one because uh, this is what helps when you have uh, uh, write out some some add additional text. We say, okay, we're going to uh, we're going to test. Uh, we're going to add, and then we're going to do a a group list after we added. Uh, Arlene by uh, saying after and then the, the person list. So here you can sort of see our soft and nice to have a, uh, uh, a little helper by like this. And in fact, after and the PLA is a person. And so sure it's after person Arlene. And it's also a nice thing sometimes to have this um, uh, let's see, put extra spaces in sometimes, uh, extra lines. So here you say, okay, here's our our our, our uh, test listing the, the uh, or uh, doing the group list. And sure enough, you can sort of see that uh, it's it's added the, uh, um, the person. And then you can sort of see that uh, uh, we do the add, person, rich and friend, who's a, uh, because it's a friend, he shows up with the, uh, in the list of the, that friend portion. So anyways, this is just a, it's, it's a bit much to go uh, quickly through, but just, uh, it is a, a truly um, uh, functional example of something that you could start off with uh, if you had a program that you wanted to uh, gain whatever uh, uh, database and you wanted to have groups. Notice this whole thing here is uh, able to, um, you, can, you can set up uh, you know, one group, you can set up another group, another group, another group, and you can build uh, uh, a whole system uh, as opposed to our single uh, friends and family where you, we just, uh, all the code was sort of one one purpose you couldn't you could do it once you could do it one place but hard to have multiple uh, person groups whereas uh people groups where here is with the class you can build um different groups and uh and all these functions uh, will work on uh, each one of those those groups Okay, any questions on that? I mean, I know it's a lot to look at, but it's, um, it is something that, uh, um, it's a major uh, component of, of programming these days to build uh, 
classes that you can, and objects of, built based on those classes that you can build uh, and use. And we have the, all the, pretty much you can do more. I mean, that's not to say this is everything there is to do with classes, but this is an example, a functional example of something you could actually uh, use in uh, programming and putting together uh, and, and knowing at least the aspects of this gives you a sense of, of the, what, what goes into uh, uh, you know, programming uh, these days and, and using Python to build uh, systems. Okay, I think we'll, uh, classes are a lot and uh, I, I probably will go and spend uh, a, a fair amount of time next session on uh, examples of classes. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, just, just, uh, just as a, a sort of uh, whet your appetite, uh, I spent some time and I sent you, uh, we didn't get to it, but uh, as an example of uh, classes, uh, using, using classes and objects, uh, we have, uh, let's see, what will I do? Uh, we put together something that, that examples and you have them of, of a ball uh, with a number, uh, for example, and uh, as an example of them, we put together, this is the balls, 2D uh, numbers them, and we put together sort of an example. Uh, essentially, this is a set of uh, balls randomly running toward the middle of the screen, and then stopping when they all got there. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so the, 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 this, this, this program uh, uses turtle, uh, also random, of course, so we have, and uh, uh, a timing thing that's mostly for debugging, so you don't really need to know that, but a, uh, um, a class uh, that you have the code for in ball2d. This is often that way I do um, the code. I, if I even if I have just one uh, <coughs> class in there, I use the from the name of the file, import the name of the class, and the way uh, a style that's used often in Python is that thing. The the the, the file is lowercase, uh, separating names with uh, with underscore, and in the class name. Uh, you often just take out, you just capitalize the first, uh, if it's a number, you just leave the same, you, you capitalize the first part of the, the name. So this is just a, um, uh, sort of uh, scene, if you will, that just takes and uh, uh, essentially creates a, a number of, of solid balls and of different colors and essentially has random uh, sizes and random positions and sends them all um, running toward the, uh, the center and then uh, stops the uh, ball when it uh, gets to the end. And if we have a little debugging here that just sort of says, uh, uh, when the ball is fit across uh, the center, uh, uh, prints out the, the message. So uh, you might want to just take a look at that. Think about it. It's a little bit, uh, it may be a little complicated, but uh, 
I, I thought it looked uh, this front again. Any questions? No, so we have next thing we'll have, of course, the next uh, the next uh, um, iteration of the uh, the class project, and that is to to support uh, multiple games. So when the guy finishes uh, the uh, a game, uh, you'll ask him, uh, "Do you want to play another?" And here we are. Okay, as I said, just uh, something to give a lot of people are graphically motivated. So I, I did want to put a, uh, oh, and then you have the other uh, simpler example, which is worthwhile looking at. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, object, the turtle objects uh, that uh, this, let's see, what was it? Um, Uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, the thing that just uh, allowed us to do uh, yeah, it's a, a, a fair bit simpler, but uh, not bad. And you, you might want to play around with the uh, that see if you can add things to it. Maybe uh, if you have a problem, let me know. So here we are. We're at the question and answer. I'm uh, here, and uh, any question is uh, not too small. So you, if you if you have something, a question, or you want you, we did something that was uh, unclear, or you're interested in uh, that, please. Now is your chance. I left it specifically so that I wouldn't, uh, you know, just hopefully uh, drone you out because I know this is a lot to look at. So I, I can uh, fully expect that there may be some things that are uh, unclear or you want to know uh, if you can do something else or uh, how to do something or uh, how I, what, what I did was uh, unclear, please. Please, now is your chance because I did put the uh, a half hour here to explicitly give you a chance. And we did find some, some people found a very trickle problem that turned out to be, uh, don't, don't name any of your modules turtle, otherwise uh, a turtle won't work. Uh, but uh, you're, uh, yeah, so probably don't, don't name any of your, files anything that looks like it's going to be a very commonly named module like time or random uh, because Python will look at your uh, version of that name and use it. And that's probably not what you want. But any questions, comments? You got your chance. And if you find yourself, uh, you can always uh, put it in chat or uh, you can uh, email me. I'm glad that some people have uh, done it in the past and we've uh, carried on, uh, uh, you know, if you just feel totally like you you, you just want to do it privately, email, that's, that's fine too. But uh, if you have a question, uh, something's unclear, my guess is other people uh, find it unclear too. So now is your chance. And if nobody else has asked it, that means you have the floor. Anybody? Seems like there was just a lot of thanks in the- I in did, the I did, I did, I did see the thanks and I, I appreciate that. But I said, don't, don't forget the people here, if, uh, if you find yourself, you know, Feel free to ask questions, either email or, or personally. Uh, we just love to, uh, programming can be a very lonely affair. And so uh, that's for the one thing I, I did this course for. I felt a lot of times, uh, uh, there are a lot of books and, and online courses there 
Uh, most of them, I think, are most for uh, existing programmers that want to learn, learn a new language. Some are uh, tutorials, and but uh, so I felt that uh, this would give people a chance to get some personal connection because I've been there too. And it can be very uh, uh, disheartening to find that what you try to do doesn't seem to work and you don't know why. Okay, I guess I guess we are indeed uh, done. Uh, you want me to just uh, select the, I'm gonna save you the email, I'll just select the chat here, I guess. I could do that. Yeah, I'll um, 